Okay, okay, hear me out. What if I told you that under this driver head cover is a driver made by one of the world's biggest sports brands that could cost you 50% less than a driver from a major golf brand, i.e. tailor-made, Titleist, Ping, Callaway? Well, what if I also told you this driver was adjustable and could reach ball speeds rivaling said drivers? That's exactly what I have here today, guys. This is the Inesis 900 driver. This is a fully adjustable driver coming in from the guys at Decathlon at around 250 pounds. Now, for me, you know on this channel, guys, if you're not new here, that I love something that's gonna save you guys money, yet help you perform to the best of your ability. Guys, I've got this driver out here on the golf course today at Woolley Park. I've also been in the simulator to test this driver for numbers and see just how it does perform, both in its higher spin, most forgiving setting, and when we move these weights around and send it to its low spin, more knuckleball setting. You'll also see, guys, I've got this in a 10 degree loft. We don't have an adjustable loft sleeve on here, but I think for £250 for a brand new driver, this could potentially put the cat well and truly amongst those pigeons. Guys, it's a 440cc head, so it looks a tiny bit smaller than some of your bigger drivers. Who here has heard of Inesis? And who would consider putting this in the bag in 2023 if you're looking for that more budget brand new driver so guys decathlon have always made fantastic sports goods we all know that they've made camping stuff they've made fishing stuff they've made football soccer rugby basketball you name it decathlon have made it and they've also made it that tiny bit more affordable for you guys if you want to play these sports now, Inesis is their golf brand, and for me, I've tested the Inesis 100, the Inesis 500, the Inesis Tour 900 golf ball was fantastic for its price point, so I thought there's no reason why this would be any different. And I must say, by looking at it, I quite like it. I've tested it inside already. It is full of little bits of technology, which I will talk you through, but they've not overdone it. That head shape for me looks really, really good. Obviously, this isn't designed for the scratch golfer. It's not designed for that low handicap golfer looking to make his way into a scratch golfer, but I think it's more designed for probably the percentage of golfer now, especially after the pandemic, which we've all got through. People are thinking, you know what? I want to try golf. I want to get into golf. I don't want to go and spend 500 pounds on the latest tailor-made Stealth 2. I don't want to spend probably more than that on the brand new Callaway Paradigm or the Ping G430. 250 pounds i can probably tick that off in my head as okay i can probably take it back to my family and say you know what i've got this 250 quid it's brand new it's adjustable it should help me play a little bit better golf i think that might fly a little bit better i think its biggest problem is second hand drivers that second hand market you can get a lot of driver for your money at 250 pounds but it's not going to be brand new, is it? That is such a good ball flight, by the way. So the driver at the moment is in its more forgiving setting. It's got the heavy weight back, which obviously pushes MOI back, which means it's going to be a little bit more higher spin. It's going to be a bit more forgiving on those off-center hits. What if, even out here on the golf course, we set to work at trying to make this a little bit more of a beast, a little bit more of a knuckleball club? And you can see these are pretty easy enough to come off. You do need the specific key though because it's a different thread size to other driver's keys one thing i would say is be careful because it does come apart you can see that weight is a two-piece weight and i did kind of oh no i've dropped it i kind of came a little bit unstuck with this in the sim for me this could be a little bit easier it could be a little bit simpler so this is the oh my god james right i'm just going to do this stud here instead of trying to show you on the camera but this could be a little bit easier the key isn't the most ergonomic thing and like it's its own thread so you've got to be really come on there we go really careful with this but for 250 quid with full adjustability remember when we first saw adjustable weights in drivers back in the day when i mean this idea reminds me very much of the cobra which one was it now the cobra f Anyway, that yellow one from Cobra. I think the idea behind being able to do this on, let's be fair, what is a budget driver is pretty phenomenal. And I think a lot of people may well agree with me here. This isn't the only technology that's in this club. Don't be forgiven for mistaking that. Now, how much difference does this make? I think an adjustable neck would have been fantastic. I'd love to see if maybe it will be brought into the next version of an assist driver. But how much is this going to change it now? Is it going to turn it into a low spin machine. We're gonna try and take the same line 
obviously the driver looks exactly the same, it feels the same. Does it feel the same impact? Very similar ball flight, that felt nice and strong. Actually felt a little bit toey. But I can see that running all the way down the fairway. It sounds good, it feels good for me. These are all boxes that for me, I would need to tick if I was buying a driver. For me, it doesn't matter how much a driver costs. Well, it does actually matter quite a lot, but I wouldn't buy a driver even if it was half the price, if it sounded god awful. And this definitely doesn't, so I'm going to give it that. Right, one more with this weight move forward. Let's see if we can get it out there. Let's see if we can hit some long drives. And guys, as I said earlier in this video, I have tested this inside and some of the numbers were, some of them were flattering. Some of them were not that good. But if you get it out the middle, this could, yeah, this could. And I think that's where maybe they might find an issue here because if you don't get it out the middle, this probably couldn't, this probably couldn't keep up there with the more expensive clubs. But does it mean you just have to work on hitting it out the middle? A little bit more. That was an absolute rocket peeling back into the fairway. Does it make you concentrate more, thus make you hit the middle of that face more, thus turn you into a better golfer for half the price? I suppose if concentration was the only factor, then uh, golf wouldn't be that difficult, would it? But I guess another couple of checkpoints for this driver are the components. So it does have a UST shaft in there, which feels solid. It feels good. I've got it in 6F5, which means stiff, I think, basically. We do have their own grip, though. I don't know how long that would last. It does look very ping-like, and I do like the little alignment aids on there, but big fan of this shaft as well. High tensile modulus. I've got no idea what that means, but it feels good, it sounds good, and it's cheap. What more? do we want and you see as touched on I think the biggest problem they're going to have here is that second hand market that second hand market you can get a tailor-made sim 2 for around 260 pounds so for 10 pounds more you get a premium tailor-made product you can definitely get a kind of Titleist TSI product you can get a ping g425 product I think I'm right in saying does this perform better than any of those that's probably another matter for another day. But if you want something brand spanking, sparkling new, 250 quid. Guys, comment below, could you see yourself using it and hold on to your hats and see how it performs inside? Because it's rather interesting. Those drives on this hole, even if it is slightly downwind, are good. They are very good. The issue I mentioned earlier about off-centre hits, not so good. That's a long way back, and that's where potentially the budget of this club, obviously it's a lot cheaper than, like we said, brand new tailor-made pink colorway, I don't need to keep naming them. Is that what you pay for? Are you now paying the money for performance off-center rather than if you nuke it every time? I think that's what the brands have been trying to get out for a long time, but then it's twice the price. Would you rather have the money in the bank and your bad shot be there? Again, comment below and let me know. Now, I want it to be noted that I really, really, really commend what the guys at Decathlon are trying to do here. And in fact, I take my hat off to them. Still need a new haircut. But for me, it would have been so easy for them to say, you know what, we're plowing millions into R&D. We are putting a lot of resources into making golf clubs as good as we can. Let's just make it a more premium product. Let's give it a more premium name. Let's charge an arm and a leg for it because we'll make more money that way. Whereas they've not done that. They've said, you know what? We're still going to plow a lot of our resources into R&D, but we're going to try and do it for the everyday golfer, for the guy who has more of a budget. Maybe golf isn't his main sport, but wants something brand new, doesn't want to delve into the secondhand market. For me, and that's not a sarcastic clap, I mean it. Right, I give you a very difficult golf hole into the wind with a big old hazard up on the left hand side and the Inesis 900 driver with the heavy weight setting at the front, which means it is in its low spin setting. Now this should be a recipe for something beautiful. There's every chance it may not be because there is one idiot on the end of this golf club that struggles on this hole. But for 250 pounds, can I hit the fairway three times? That's one out of one, and that, although it's not a low knuckleball ball flight, felt solid, it's done the job, 
and it's in the fairway. It was a lovely little fade, actually, that. Right, let's try and go more down the right side now, maybe draw it in a touch. There's a little bit of offset on here, so it's not going to slice on you, I don't think. Again, quite high. I mean, it's felt good again. Again, it's in the fairway. It's ticked to the box, as you can actually see on the strike here. But that was just a touch high and tow it out of that titanium forged face. But again, felt nice, sounded good. I actually think that face looks delightful as well. It does look very Titleist-esque. In fact, the whole driver does with that teardrop look. And let's be fair, the fairly traditional looks, I think we can say. Fair to say as well, this is in 10 degrees, which I wouldn't normally have. I'd normally have 9 degrees, so bear that in mind. But these are what they come in at the moment. Obviously, bear that in mind when we talk numbers in just a moment as well. Right, I'm really going to try and keep this ball flight down. That wind has kind of stopped those two in the tracks a bit. Low. Oh, I've pulled it, that's wet. That's me trying to manufacture something that I'm not comfortable with. And I think that was a splash. Well, two out of three ain't bad, as, if I can get my tea out of the ground. As a famous man once said, guys, let's jump in the studio. Let's see just how this driver performs, A for numbers, B for how it can change when you move the weights around. Then, guys, we're going to talk if I would maybe recommend this for the price or delve into that treacherous, some would say, second-hand market. Let's take a look. As mentioned, I took this Inesis 900 driver into the studio, not only to test it for numbers, but to test it for just how versatile it can be when changing those weights around. Obviously, a lot of budget drivers don't have this ability to change movable weights and change spin rates, potentially. You can see here, we're just going to change that weight. Now, I managed to not lose it in the simulator as well. I say potentially because I didn't really see a huge difference in the ball flights. One thing that I really enjoyed is when I did get it out the middle with what felt like a good swing on the day, I could get some ball speeds around kind of 157, 158. The problem being when I didn't get it out the middle, which I'll show you in just a second, the numbers weren't really there. If you look at these numbers here, I managed to get a couple of ball speeds around the 160 mark and they were carrying almost 270, which is a great number for this driver. Unfortunately, on average, ball speeds weren't too bad, but the spin rate killed it. Obviously, this is a 10 degree driver. That might be what's kind of killed it for me, but carrying around 270, which is a good probably 15 yards short of where I would anticipate a new driver. And as you can see, moving the weights around didn't really have much difference with launch, with ball speed or with spin. They are very, very, very similar. So for me, definitely when you get this driver out of the middle, it can perform. I was getting ball speeds up there near 160, which for me is a very, very good ball speed. There's no getting around that. Consistency wise, not quite there as you could see. The spin rates were a little bit high all round. I didn't see a huge difference when changing these weights around. But that doesn't mean that I don't love what Decathlon and Inesis are trying to do here by making, let's be fair, a good adjustable driver at such a budget price. I'm really looking forward to see how they move forward with this. I'm really looking forward to see how it would maybe perform in someone's hands who has a little bit less ball speed, a little bit less club head speed, to see if that would have more of a difference. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Really hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, smash that subscribe button below. I'll see you all at exactly the same time tomorrow. Bye.